We all know the phrases such as one can never have enough hardscape. Yeah, that's probably true. Or how about CO2 regulators? For sure useful to have some in stock. And what about limited edition and vintage ADA tools? My name is Yuris and I have to make a confession. I'm an aquascaping hoarder. In today's video, I'm starting my minimalist aquascaper journey. I'm actually going to start the process of declutter and letting go things that some of them I owned for several years and never used. What does it mean to be a minimalist aquascaper? We're going to explore a little bit and also uh, in the future videos, but in today's video, I'm going to answer like where all this stuff came from, why I kept it and which problems it has caused to me. By the way, guys, today's video is sponsored by Aqua you more about them and a really cool giveaway later in the video. Over the past years I accumulated a ton of aquarium related stuff which I painfully realized as I recently moved to a new apartment. And after moving to a new apartment I was uh, yeah, not able to put everything from my old basement into the new basement. For that reason everything aquarium related was dumped into this studio. And the big elephant in the room is for sure this massive amount of hardscape that I have over here. But why do I have so much hardscape? Well, it's pretty easy. As you know from my channel, I always do a lot of aquarium projects for the sake of creating content. But also I have a lot of my own aquariums and also customer aquariums. Um, as an example, I did this wild rhino stone aquarium just recently. I did this big giant angelfish aquarium, the 180p Ryuboku aquarium. And all of these projects, there were some leftovers. Because of lack of time and the convenience of just putting the leftovers into the basement, yeah, I ended up uh, accumulating a lot of hardscape, guys. And as I say, there is this rule, like, or the saying, you can never have enough hardscape. Uh, you always order more hardscape than you're going to need because it's the best thing to have this choice. It's, it's something you have to live with, those hardscape leftovers, except if you have a very great dedicated shop uh, where you have a dojo, where you can pre-build your hardscape. In this case, you can buy exactly what you need. If you buy online, you don't see what you buy. Uh, yeah, then get more than you need and then try to resell all the leftovers. Basically, perfect transition here. This is what I'm going to do with all the leftovers here. Well, not all of them, some of the hardscape I'm going to keep, but some that I definitely have too much, I'm going to sell. Too much stuff takes up too much space. And ultimately, space is money. So you're wasting money if you are hoarding too much stuff. If you have as much stuff as I do, and you know you need that little spare part, and you have a full box of spare lily pipes and all kind of glass items, it will take you probably some time first to find this box and then to find the exact item in this box. So it's absolutely time consuming. I don't know how many times I thought I have something because I have so much and then I was looking for it and then either I couldn't find it or I was thinking I have it when I actually didn't. Then all this stuff is losing value and it's getting outdated. Uh, best example is over here. Uh, I just found is this first generation Senai device. I bought this probably a decade ago because it says on the box compatible with Windows 7. If it says Windows 7, it must be old. After binge watching hours of minimalism videos by Matti Avella on YouTube, I came up with a very simple three-step process. First, classify items I really want to keep. Tier two, items to sell and to donate. Tier 3 items to dispose immediately. They are either broken or super low value items and they're not worth the effort to sell or to donate. But let's be realistically, there are probably going to be way too many things on tier 1 list. So to reduce the number of items on tier 1 list, uh, just ask yourself the following questions. How long do I own it? When was the last time I used it? When am I realistically going to use it again? Will it lose value, become outdated? How difficult is it to re-obtain the item? Like with Hardscape, there's also a lot of aquarium gear that kind of accumulated over the years. Uh, if we take this uh, small Eheim canister filter, I probably was using it for the last time, like five years ago. If you look down here, I have another box. And this is my Twinster sterilizer box. I probably have six sterilizers in here. 
down here I have a box full of substrate additives. Uh, so this is actually quite nice. Over here at the top is uh, a very interesting box. Uh, so that's probably everything filter related, like all kind of filter connection parts, filter fittings. So here we have some cocoa fiber substrate material that I purchased at some time because I wanted to build some Babikusa substrate balls. Original Japanese aqua journals. Lots of cool topics. I don't even know what the topics are about because I don't understand Japanese. Oh, that one is probably about hardscape, so that's a cool one. And the box over here is also very interesting because this is my collection of lily pipes of glass. Uh, some of them are fine, some of them are broken. And speaking about all these lily pipes that I have in this box, um, I'm probably going to let go since lately I'm almost exclusively using the Aquario Neo Flow system, uh, which brings us to today's sponsor. Aquario is one of the most innovative companies constantly developing new and unique products. The ceramic PET diffuser originally introduced by Aquario has now become industry standard and almost entirely replaced glass diffusers. With a wide range of shapes and sizes, there is a perfect Neo CO2 diffuser for everyone. My new and favorite is the tiny CO2 diffuser which is used with the Neo Mixer outflow. Simply attached to the filter outflow, it works like an inline diffuser but without the risks and with all the comfort of a classic diffuser. By the way, all the Aquario Neo CO2 and Neo Flow products are made from highly recyclable PET material and are close to impossible to break. Just recently, Aquario announced a new lily pipe outflow accessory for the NeoFlow filter pipes, adding another way of customization to the already incredibly versatile lineup. A complete review of the entire NeoFlow range is something I would like to cover in another video. Meanwhile, if you can think of another accessory that is not yet part of the NeoFlow range, drop a comment down below, chances are Aquario is reading it. To finish off today's video, I'm going to give away a custom set of Aquario NeoFlow uh, pipes with all the uh, possible accessories. Uh, all you have to do is to be a subscriber to this channel and answer one of the questions in this video. The winner is going to be picked randomly in a couple of weeks and announced in a future video. Thank you Aquario for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see me burn some Aquario diffusers with fire, just click this link over here and continue watching.